Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams. I am a Fortinet instructor here in Tempe, Arizona for Dynamic Worldwide. And this video is going to be super short. So I had a viewer, uh, Shane, thank you very much for pointing this out, that was mentioning to me that he had a hard time setting up one of the FortiGates out of the out of the box, meaning like, you know, out of our GNS3 here uh, because of what was um, set there by default, which is the the dynamic IP address so guys I don't know when that changed per se but just to kind of like recap uh, if you get a FortiGate out of the out of the box out of the field for the most part it's gonna have a default IP address of 192.168.1.99 um, slash 24 on either port 1 or the internal interfaces there so um, and the VMs on the other hand don't so even though they have like the full access to like uh you know um, access it through the HTTP or HTTPS or SSH right out of the box in our VMs uh, it's actually set to DHCP instead of static IP addresses and that works just fine except for when you want a static IP address so um, I'm just gonna do this little updated demo of how to get like your your most basic Fortinet's FortiGate uh, lab using the latest firmware here up and running in just moments. It shouldn't take long at all. So I've already done the videos on how to import the images in and where to get them from the support websites. Um, but let's say that we went ahead and we have a FortiGate here running 6.2, which is the, the latest build. So let me just uh, drag that out here. Bloop. Plop it on there. All right. You got to love GNS3, by the way. I love how easy that is. And remember, port 1 has DHCP turned on. So, I mean, if you really wanted to get as basic as it gets, let's start there. So, for an internet connection now, there is a NAT cloud. Let's see, where are you, Mr. NAT? There you are. I'm going to throw that up here. And this is a single interface that is going to NAT your internal connection to this lab environment. And the whole idea is just to simply, you know, keep from addresses being conflicted, what have you. It doesn't bridge it, it nats it, and you can start using the real internet in this environment, okay? So all we really need to do is take that natted cloud, and because DHCP is configured on port one, bam, that is all you need to do to get an IP address and get the internet flowing there. So, but we still need a way to configure it, right? Um, now, in previous videos, I have shown how you can use the Firefox, for some reason the Chromium, uh, virtual box stopped working but there's a, a Firefox one in here somewhere right um, which is supposed to be like a I, I think it's docker but anyways it's just enough to get a web browser rolling I have not found it very stable um, compared to the one down here which is called web term so I've been using this lately to kind of get a most you know basic version of an OS it's running like tiny Linux or something like that and I have found that these are way more easier to deploy resource wise especially when you have like a thousand year old laptop like mine um, in fact I'm gonna start using these in my demo because I was using Windows 7 PCs uh, virtually and they were just taking up way too much resources but if I just have like a remote connection or I'm trying to spit up a tunnel or test my my dnat my vips you know and i need to like resolve a web page or something like that these things these things rock and they're definitely way more um uh functionality wise way more um advanced than these virtual pcs that are essentially allows you just to test an ip address and to ping something out so uh we went ahead and we dropped that in here all right and let me get my tooling cabling tool here okay and before you can actually use this web term though you're gonna have to right click here and go to configure and here where it says network configuration you're gonna want to edit that and then you're gonna want to either say hey am I gonna get an IP address dynamically or am I gonna get one statically in our case let's go ahead and do static because remember port one already has dynamic on there alright and uh, let's just take out these first few hashtags or pound signs depending on how old you are <laughs> anyways all right let's get out of this all right so as you can see here I mean right out of the box it's using a zero two and a gateway of zero one why not I'm not even gonna mess with that um, 
And the reason why is because we can just configure our FortiGates to do that. I mean, that's fine. No big deal, right? So we'll hit Apply. We'll hit OK. And then we'll go ahead and we'll spit everything up by hitting this, this Play button up here. And, you know, of course, it takes a few moments to post or whatever. Um, if you double click, you can see the FortiGate booting up. Now, what's really neat about 6.2 and, you know, um, there's been a lot of changes with 6.2, by the way, that I'm discovering all the time. I've just started um, teaching those courses. Uh, and one of them is that I believe it formats the hard drive for you if you uh, if you have a hard drive. So in the old VMs, you had to go there and do it manually in order to get logging and things like that turned on. But now it just kind of kind of works. And of course, like it looks like nothing's happening here. Come on there, buddy. Let's see if this guy's working. Okay, so everything is just going really slow. But as you can see here, I mean, we have a terminal if we want to use the command line. Um, we also have our Firefox if we want a web browser. So I really like the web term uh, over the VPCSs. So let's go ahead and see if my 40 gate is, is booting up yet. Come on, buddy. Yeah, I have no idea why that's taking so long. You can do it, dude. All right. I'm going to hit pause right here and and uh, kick its butt. I'll be right back. So, And, guys, it was just it being slow. So my, my laptop's on the way out. I've been using it for too many years. So anyways, as you can see, though, now, which I thought was very interesting, is that, one, um, I think this started in 5.6. It it makes a randomized serial number instead of using all the zeros. And what's nice about that is you can start using that for like a high availability in the test environments, um, which I've, I've done in different videos there. But most importantly, though, is that it formats your disk for you, which I think is awesome because before, you know, if you didn't go in there and formatted the hard drive, it looks like you had no hard drive and you couldn't do logging in these little test environments. So. Uh, once it gets done formatting it, though, it always reboots it. So there we go. And it is restarting. So good times there. Anyways, guys, sorry about that. So once again, we have the NAT cloud. We have DHCP on port 1. We have uh, port 2 here plugged into our web term, which is just a mini, see, it's just a mini Linux, tiny Linux running just enough to, to run Firefox here. It looks like I was too impatient. I kept on clicking stuff when I was loading up. So um, what's nice too, though, is that, you know, it has terminals, so you can test things for, for IP addresses. And uh, I'm going to start using them over the v, v, uh, VPCSs. So here we go. So here we are on the FortiGate. It just booted up in GNS3 for the first time. It's going to be admin, no password. All right. And we're going to do a config system uh, interface, right? And then if we do a show here, we'll see that port 1 now has DHCP turned on instead of the static. So if you want a static IP address, like in my advanced lab, where we set like the 10.200.1.1, I think it is, uh, you just have to do a set mode static there in order to get it to, to get off of DHCP mode. All right. Um, but if we do a, uh, let me just uh, back out real quick oops and and do a diagnose IP address list here you'll see that it got an IP address from that NAT cloud so all we have to do is essentially write the firewall policy to allow that uh, internet traffic to come through and that's all we need to do to spit up the internet so because on the FortiGates if it does receive an IP address via DHCP and the option is there for the default gateway it will go ahead and write the quad zero in there for the default gateway on the FortiGates, which is kind of nice. But let's go ahead and get an IP address here on, on port two while we're at it. So let's do a config system interface. We'll do an edit port two, right? We'll set an IP address of 192.168.0.1. Okay. And that is it, guys. We should be able to access the GUI now. Or can we? I just remembered. Oh, snap. Config system interface edit port 2. Let's do a show. All right. Uh, I forgot my allow access. All right. So set allow access. And this is the administrative, the management access. So I want to ping. I want to be able to um, 
uh, SSH, maybe Telnet, only because the free VMs test environment, usually Telnet's turned off, HTTP, HTTPS. There we go. And that allow access, guys, is is uh, one line. So if I did set allow access ping, set allow access SSH, it would just take the last one that we committed to. So make sure that you put all the protocols on there. You can even do a, a show there just to confirm it. All right. And don't forget, you can also do a get here to see all your options other than just the ones that are configurable. So, uh, but let's do an end to commit. Okay. And if we want to here, we can do an execute ping 192.168.0.2 to see that it's talking to the web term, which which it is. So good times. All right. So that's all we need. So now we go into our web term. Okay. And we should be able to access the GUI. So, oops. And there you guys go. So admin, no password. And without my yapping here, <laughs> You can essentially get this up and running and get enough for your FortiGates to start um, uh, playing around with the configuration, start looking at some of the settings, especially if you're coming from the older versions of FortiOS and you just want to kind of poke around and see what's new with 6.2 because there is a lot. Uh, they made a lot of changes, added a lot of things, even took some things out. Um, so you definitely want to read your release notes and you definitely want to... Um, you know, give it good thought before just jumping the gun on this new flavor of 6.2. There's definitely benefits to to evaluate, which I, I won't go in here. So, um, but just to, just for fun, because obviously you guys can stop this video at any time, I'm going to go ahead and, and finish the puzzle here. Um, now, if you guys remember on this web term, by default, the DHCP, not the DHCP, the uh, static IP addresses is pointing to the default gateway, for DNS, so I don't think DNS is going to be working here, out of the out of the box. So what we're going to have to do is turn on DNS forwarding. So let's go into feature visibility. Let's go ahead and turn on our DNS database. Bloop. All right, and now we can go up to our networking DNS servers. And let's just go ahead and accept DNS requests from port 2. And we're just going to forward them to the system's DNS. So um, now it can at least do DNS requests. Now what DNS servers are they talking about here? They're going to be the ones that are going to be defined here. All right. And by default, it just uses the FortiGuards. Oh my gosh, look at that latency time. See, it's stuff like this that's brand new that blows my mind, all right? Because, um, what you call it, um, this is brand new in 6.2. I had no idea that they actually showed the latency of the DNS servers. Look at that. That's awesome. Now, remember, we're like several layers into the virtual environment, so that's why my... That's ridiculous that my times are that high. But in reality, they, they wouldn't be, so... Hot dog, that is hot dog, hot dog, that is just awesome. So, um, and it looks like it's updating those statistics in real time. So, thank you, Fortinet, for keeping on making stuff awesome. See, I'm still learning stuff all the time myself. Uh, but now that we have DNS working, we can go ahead and write that firewall policy. We don't have to worry about our default gateway because it should be there. So, let's just make a real quick policy to get out to the internet. So, uh, we'll go to policy and objects, IP4, we'll call it internet. Our incoming interface is going to be our ingress, which is going to be our LAN. Okay. Our outgoing is going to be our port one. Our source will just be really bad kids and say all, all bad kids. All right, here we go. Just to kind of test the functionality here. Services all, sure. Uh, make sure we do, make sure we do our natting. Guys, this is one of the biggest changes that floored me. So in older versions of 40 OS, it used to be either your VDOM or your full box was in flow-based inspection mode or proxy-based inspection mode. You can freaking do this now per policy. That just like blew my mind. Anyways, um, yeah, and that should be it, guys. We should now be able to Google something. So let's just go ahead and... <laughs> what the heck? I can't type. Here we go. Google. 
And there you guys go. So, uh, video was way longer than I wanted it to be. Uh, I just wanted to recap, guys, that it's a little bit different now with the newer versions of uh, FortiGate 6.2. And as you can see, there's tons of stuff in 6.2 to... Uh, to keep you busy exploring wise and this is just a really quick lab you can throw up using the free VMs all of these are free by the way as long as you have a support contract from Fortinet the web terms free the NAT cloud is free with GNS3 uh, that you can go ahead and poke around and, and explore and and see all the really neat things that Fortinet's deploying here so alright I'll stop it there guys uh, Shane once again thank you for sending that comments um, and uh, yeah I just really appreciate you guys and I'll talk to you guys uh, Talk to you guys later. So take care.